This is the Playdate, a new handheld game system you might have seen. It features a crank you can use to control games, but I think the best part is you can actually make games for this thing. Now, what kind of games would you imagine people would make for the Playdate? To my surprise, I couldn't find a single fishing game at all. So I challenged myself these last two weeks to make a complete fishing game from start to finish. Stick around to see the final game and to also see a special guest appearance. First step was to figure out what type of fishing game I wanted to make. My first idea was to create some sort of first person perspective fishing game, which is similar to something I've actually tried to do in the past. However, I thought that maybe programming to do the 3D perspective might be a little too hard for me. So I switched the idea to a flat 2D perspective. With that figured out, I went ahead and made a little scene with someone sitting on a pier with a fishing rod and used the same math I used in my previous game, Escape from Complex 32, to draw this laser arm and took it to create this casting animation. My next task was to create the fishing line. I wanted the end of the line to arc through the air, but the issue was I wasn't sure how to draw the line. Realistically, it should have this curve to it, but the easiest way is to just draw a line between the end of the rod and the hook. And if there's an easy path, I'm taking it every day of the week. Of course, we need to have the crank be able to reel the line in. So I added that in really quickly. But as I was adding this in, I had a sudden idea. The crank isn't the only interesting input mechanism on the playdate. It actually has an accelerometer as well, which you can use to get the orientation of the device. How cool would it be if you can physically do a casting motion with the playdate and how fast you did it determine how far the line would go? There was one issue though. The accelerometer at any given moment in time only gives me discrete points. When the playdate is held upright, it returns a z-axis value of zero. And when lying flat, it gives a z-axis value of one, with other angles giving numbers in between. How would I know how fast the playdate is moving from just these single points? Well, here's the solution I came up with. I imagine the casting motion to look like this. What I can then do is to record the angle that the playdate is rotated at every frame. Since I remembered from my physics class that speed, or velocity, is the rate of change of distance over time, I can calculate how far the angle has changed from the start of the cast to the end of the cast, and divide that by how much time it took. If you're swinging the playdate faster, the change in angle should be greater over less time, and if you're moving it slower, the change in angle should be smaller over more time. It took a bit of tweaking, but I couldn't believe how well it was working. With that out of the way, I was ready to tackle the biggest challenge yet. I don't know how I got this in my head, but I really wanted the water to look great. And the only way I could think of doing that was by having simulated water physics. To do that, I went to the lab and spent countless hours calculating math equations and doing simulation experience to get the perfect... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I went online and copied someone's code. Do you actually think I was gonna do it myself? Of course, it wasn't as easy as copy and pasting it over as I had to port it to work on the playdate, but it was much easier than doing it from scratch. It's not like an amazing hyper-realistic water simulation, but the CPU on the playdate isn't very powerful, so I think it's good enough, especially with this cool impulse effect I managed to fit in when the bobber hits the water. With most of the core systems in place, it was time to get some actual gameplay. My idea was that you would have a timer as well as a tension meter. When you caught the fish, it would pull on your line and reeling it in would increase your tension, but letting go would release it. However, you have to reel the fish in completely before the timer runs out or else you would lose the fish. So you have to manage the tension and the time to successfully catch the fish. I first added a mechanic that after some random amount of time, a fish would bite and start pulling on your line. With that done, I added in the timer that pops up and snaps the line if it reaches the end. Then I added in the tension bar that increases as you crank and decreases when you let go, as well as snapping the line if you reach the max. But when I was playing with this current state of the game, I felt like something was missing. It felt like there was basically one strategy I would employ over and over, which is cranking as fast as I could until the tension was almost full and then letting go until it was empty and repeating it over and over. As I was brainstorming how to fix this, I came up with this idea. What if the fish would randomly start struggling and in those moments, the tension would increase faster? I thought that by injecting a bit of randomness, I could keep the player more on their toes and make each catch more unique. So I added that mechanic along with this exclamation point indicator to highlight when the fish is struggling. So you now have to consider this additional third variable, which I think makes things more interesting. To wrap up the core game loop, I wanted to create some sort of result screen that shows you a picture of the fish you just caught. However, you may have noticed that I actually suffer from a serious condition. I've had it since I was born and I'm struggling with it to this day. It's called programmer art. I'm literally using math to draw almost everything on the screen, and the fisherman is unironically a stick figure. I needed some serious help, and my completely arbitrary two-week deadline was coming to an end. I didn't know what to do until... Hey, is this, uh, Atsu? Goodkiss, my favorite game dev YouTuber? Yes, it is I. Anywho, I just thought I'd randomly reach out, you know, this definitely isn't some pre-scripted uh, Discord skit or anything like that. Oh, good guess. I'm in a dark place right now, man. I could really use your help. <sighs> Go check your inbox. Mm. 
Maybe the conversation didn't go exactly like that. But if you don't know, Goodkiss is an awesome game dev YouTuber who is amazing at pixel art. He reached out to me recently to do a collab and sent over these awesome designs. I requested it when I was still thinking that the game would be first person perspective. So these mockups are for that, which look amazing and made me wish I went with that route instead, but it is what it is. I also requested an extra fish be made for obvious reasons. Goodgiss is also working on this Metroidvania called Dewdrop Dynasty, which you should definitely check out in Wishlist. After receiving the art, I went straight to work adding a resource system that allowed me to add as many different types of fish as I wanted to the game. And I created this result display with the art that Goodgiss made for me. It was looking really good on the device, and videos don't do it justice with how crisp the art actually looked on the screen. But there were still several more things to do, so I had to get back to work. Next task was to create a title screen. I didn't want the mockup to go to waste, so I made it the background for the title and called the game by the pier. I also did some simple animations like fading in the title and animating the water, which I felt brought some life to the title screen. I also added an instruction screen since the mechanics were a little complicated and made it so you can use the crank to scroll the page. You can see that I made this wave scene transition as well. Of course, with any fishing game, I wanted some sort of directory to keep track of all the fish you caught. So using the Playdate Grid UI component, I created the screen to keep track of what fish you caught and also the largest size you caught. I used the normal distribution to randomly generate the length of each fish to try to make it more organic. So bigger sized fish would be more rare and you can keep playing to try to get bigger and bigger fish. When you start out, the fishing log will look like this. Lastly, I added in these clouds along with some sound effects. And this is what that turned out like. You can download the game for free, and Gugus also made a video right here about how he made the pixel art for the game. Alright, bye!